Why do we have so much clutter? How does all that clutter end up taking over certain areas of our homes? There are so many reasons why people collect clutter. And just like we don't gain those extra 10 or 20 pounds overnight, clutter takes time to pile up. It always seems to sneak up on us little by little and entirely unintentionally. So how do we accumulate so much clutter? <music> Much as it's hard to fight an enemy we can't see or identify, if we don't know why we're collecting clutter, it's going to be difficult to stop its accumulation. Here are 10 types of clutter you probably have in your house. The first type of clutter is just-in-case clutter. This type of clutter is caused by excessively stocking up or holding on to things just in case they are needed someday. Some of these tendencies likely developed in your family of origin, as in your parents and maybe even grandparents, may have accumulated this same type of clutter. Just in case clutter is mainly due to fear and a scarcity mindset in which you worry that you may not have enough of the things you need later, so you'd better hold on to them now. Of course, historic and recent events have shown us it's a good idea to have a reasonable number of consumables on hand, but there's a difference between being prepared and hoarding and having too much clutter. Stocking up or holding on to everything in this way isn't helpful and is stressing you out for no good reason. The second type of clutter is procrastination clutter. The person who has a lot of procrastination clutter says, I'll get to it later. It's said the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago, and the second best time is now. The same is true for decluttering. It's better not to let the clutter in at all. But since we have, now is the time to get it out. If you don't invest a little time now cleaning out your clutter, you'll spend a lot of time cleaning it up. The third type of clutter is bargain clutter. People who have this type of clutter tend to be bargain hunters or treasure seekers who look for or value things. They're always searching for a better fix by buying new things to fill an emptiness inside. But that's not where the real treasure of life lies. This type of clutter is also accumulated because of the thrill of finding a bargain and the feeling that we're getting a deal. I too love that feeling, but that bargain hunting thrill can get us into trouble if we buy things only because they're a deal and not because we actually need them. This type of clutter can seem hard to get rid of because we tend to overestimate the value of things that we've accumulated and letting go of things you paid good money for can seem wasteful. But once you accept that the money is already gone, it's much easier to part with the items you don't actually need. The fourth type of clutter is aspirational clutter. This is one of those seemingly well-meaning types of clutter, like the clutter accumulated from accepting too many hand-me-downs or holding on to too many sentimental items. Aspirational clutter results from things we've collected because we want to be or dream of being something. We aspire to be someone who rock climbs or reads classic novels, or someone who takes hot yoga, or rollerblades, or hosts fondue Fridays, or paints landscapes in their spare time. But now, all of the things that go with those abandoned hobbies are just collecting dust shoved in a corner or a closet somewhere. Are you ready to transform your home, but not sure where to start? Join me for my free class, Embrace Your Space, where I'll share my proven process for creating a home you love to live in. In this workshop type class, you'll learn the exact steps I've used for years to turn cluttered chaos into beautiful organized areas in my home. I'm also going to teach you my foundational step to loving the home you live in, including my secret for loving your home as it is right now, even if it's nowhere near being your dream home. Don't miss out on this opportunity to start your journey toward a home that reflects your style and feels like you. Sign up for the free class today at homemadelovely.com forward slash embrace your space YT. That's all one word, homemadelovely.com forward slash embrace your space YT. And take the first step toward creating a home you truly love to live in. The fifth type of clutter is perfectionistic clutter. The person with too much of this type of clutter continually puts off decluttering because she thinks next week I'll do it perfectly. This is different from the person who just procrastinates by putting off an unpleasant task. 
The desire for perfectionism is keeping you from taking any action at all, if this is you. But perfection is actually impossible. It's not gonna happen. You're gonna have to do some decluttering and then do some more. You will make a mess before it gets better and it will never be 100% perfect, but it will be better than it is now. The sixth type of clutter is harried clutter. The person with this type of clutter is someone whose clutter has accumulated because they have too much going on and they're constantly running around frazzled. This often leads to buying duplicates of items you already own because you don't have organized spaces and you have to search a million and one places to find what you need. So you quit searching and just buy another version of the thing. Later, you'll likely find the original somewhere random in your house, by which time it's too late. The clutter has begun, you've got duplicates, and once again, you've wasted time and money. Americans spend two and a half days a year looking for misplaced items and collectively spend, get this, $2.7 billion each year replacing items. And more than half of us are regularly late for work or school due to these frustrating searches. And the numbers aren't better in Canada and other countries either. The seventh type of clutter is chaos clutter. Sometimes we just get so worn out and busy with life that we inadvertently hold on to all the things because we have no idea where to start. And then by the time we finally come up for air and notice the mess around us, we try very hard to ignore it because we still feel so overwhelmed. When we're overwhelmed, we don't know where to begin and we feel paralyzed. There are some hard seasons in life and you should absolutely give yourself some extra grace during those times. But you do need to take the time as soon as possible after those times to clear out any clutter and then set up systems that will help you keep it out in the future. The eighth type of clutter is sentimental clutter. If you've collected sentimental clutter, you're holding on to things because of their perceived emotional hold over you or their perceived value. When you look at those things, you think of the person who gave them to you and that brings back a flood of memories. Or maybe you don't want to hurt someone's feelings by getting rid of the items they've given you or passed down to you. It's okay to feel this way, but when you can't part with anything because of this and you have no room for it, that's a big problem. The ninth type of clutter is excess gifts clutter. Gift clutter can be a little tricky to wade through because this kind of clutter piles up from the best of intentions. It means you have people who love you and want to bless you with things. Maybe they're people whose love language are gifts and you don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. Getting rid of gifts that people have given you tends to invoke feelings of guilt and thoughts like, how could I get rid of this lamp that my aunt bought me? But remember, their gift was meant to bless you, not burden you. The 10th type of clutter is creative clutter. If you're a creative clutter collector, you love to create food, arts, crafts, you name it. But cleaning up isn't very creative in itself, so you often leave a mess in your wake. Knitting needles stuffed in the couch cushions, a sink full of mixing bowls and spoons, and paint cans taking up maybe half the hallway. But it's possible to create and not have a total of a disaster of a house too. So there you have it, 10 types of clutter you probably have in your home. One, just in case clutter. Two, procrastination clutter. Three, bargain clutter. Four, aspirational clutter five, perfectionistic clutter, six, harried clutter, seven, chaos clutter, eight, sentimental clutter, nine, excessive gifts clutter, and 10, creative clutter. Now that you know what types of clutter you've collected, you can be proactive and keep the clutter out in the future. If you wanna find out how to do that, join me in my free class, Embrace Your Space. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful to know the types of clutter you have in your home, please give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my future videos focused on creating a space you love. Mm -hmm.